Welcome to Product Success Management Issues, the podcast and video series that explores in depth with experienced product managers and product marketing managers the key issues that affect product success. Sponsored by Wiley and my company, Spice Catalyst, I am Dave Freedom, your host and the author of Foundations in the Successful Management of Products series of books and courses published by Wiley. Be sure to connect with me on LinkedIn. Be sure to connect with my guest also. Hi, I'm Dave Freighton and your host for Product Success Issues. With me is Hans. Hans, uh, tell us uh, how you pronounce your name. <laughs> well, it's very German and the pronunciation is Hans Baum Kittlaus. Better than I can say it. Hans, uh, you're the uh, chairman and one of the co-founders of the International uh, Software Product Management Association. Can you tell us a little bit more about that association and what your role is? Yes. Uh, uh, ISBMA, the International Software Product Management Association, was started by a group of people from academia and the industry in 2009. At that time, uh, I had just finished my uh, one of my books, and I got through that book. I got in touch with some of these people, and we decided that we wanted to start an association dedicated to the subject of software product management, and uh, with the objective to to establish software product management as a discipline of its own, both on the academic side and in the industry, and not only the software industry, but also other industries that have software-intensive products. Gotcha. And you mentioned the book. Is this the book that you're about now? So uh, you mentioned a, a, a moment ago that you had just finished your book. Is that the book that you have out now? Well, that, that was the previous one. Now, uh-huh. last year, a new one came out, uh, and the new one now is really compliant to ISBMA material. So ISBMA has developed a curriculum with uh, several modules that are documented uh, in the form of a syllabus for each module. And uh, the book covers all the contents of the syllabi and also adds a lot of information from my personal experience and Samuel Fricker's personal experience, who is my co-author and also uh, a, a fellow member of ISBMA. Great. And um, do you happen to have a copy of your book handy? You can hold it up so we can see what the cover looks like. Yes. <laughs> there it is. Do your best uh, Vanna White impersonation. I don't know if you know who Vanna White is. <laughs> yes, it came out last year, published by Springer. And uh, so far we are quite happy with the responses. Uh, so a lot of people gave us uh, very nice feedback. Oh, great. Tell us uh, what your background and experience is in, in the field of product management. Well, I have spent all my business career in software. And I started with studying computer science, and then I joined IBM and, and worked for IBM for 12 years. And I started in software development, and then I became a project manager, and I became a line manager in software development, uh, and then I got my first opportunity in software product management, and I was made responsible for a team of product managers that managed one of IBM's operating systems. and. That was a jump into very cold water. At that time, there was nothing. There were no books, no trainings, just nothing. So the only thing you could do 
was he could talk to people who already had that job and find out what they were doing. And when I did that, I got very different answers. Uh, everybody had his or her own definition of what software product management was supposed to be. So it was it was very much learning by doing. And I started with this uh, operating system, and then I moved on and became responsible for IBM's uh, database and application development products in Europe. And so that, that was a huge revenue behind the product group and, and a lot of responsibility. And uh, I, I did that for a number of years. And so, uh, yes, uh, I think IBM was one of the first companies who, who implemented this concept of software product management already in the late 1970s, early 1980s. Uh, I recall having been in, starting in the field at that time and competing against IBM, that IBM did not seem to have a function of product management, in, at least in the United States. Do you have any visibility well, on that? that, that has changed all the time, you know, and also the approach how IBM looked at product management and how they implemented product management changed all the time. So there were times when they tried to localize product management, so it was closer to, to the sales organizations in the, in the geography. Uh, and then they centralized it again. Uh, so very much US centric for all the world. Uh, but those people, some of them at least, were kind of detached from the market reality. So that, that has always been a challenge. Uh, IBM is famous for reorganizing at least once a year, if not more often. I uh, know people, some friends of mine, have been with IBM for more than 30 years now, and they uh, recognize in the latest organizational changes, situations that they experienced 25 years ago. So I mean, the number of options how you can organize the company seems to be limited. So when you reorganize all the time, at some point in time, you get back to where you were <laughs> a long time ago. How, how, how does IBM today organize its product management function? Well, today they don't call them product managers anymore. And today they call them offering managers. Offering? Which, offering managers, yes. And the people who have that job hate that name uh, because to them it sounds too much like a sales role, which it is not supposed to be. And so uh, today, they, they, uh, to my knowledge, they have a, a, an approach where they have central product managers uh, in, the, uh, in the divisions of IBM that are close to the products and the development organizations, but they also have uh, product managers in the geographies and in some cases even in the countries uh, who are more uh, marketing and sales oriented in their work. So the first, I would call a product manager responsible for figuring out what the product is and what the product market strategy is, correct? Yeah. And the second I tend to call uh, product marketing managers, they're the ones that do the strategic marketing plan, take it yeah. to market, support the business development and, and the sales organization. Yeah. yeah. And for the product managers in the division, who do they report to? Who would be their immediate uh, superiors? In the main the product division. Correct. Um, as far as I know, they are pretty close to the executive level of the, of the product division. And there was a time uh, when uh, 
the product responsibility was uh, very centralized, and the key product managers reported almost directly to the head of the division. And so I think they, they have changed that a little bit, and, but still the product managers are still pretty uh, close to, let's say, the, the people who, who have the overall business responsibility. Gotcha. Um, and you know, of course, I've been advocating the proper title as a product success manager and product success yeah. marketing manager, which more aptly mm -hmm. describes what we as product managers do. Yeah. Uh, but for that general function, what differences do you see between uh, a startup and a large enterprise? Well, the tasks of product management are required in all companies independent from the size of the company. They need to take care of the product, they need to define the strategy of the products, the plans, uh, the marketing approach, that kind of things. And of course, in a small company like a startup, you have very few people. So typically you assign multiple tasks and roles to the same people. Uh, with, when it comes to product management, since this has a very important strategic component, in small startups, that responsibility is typically with the owners or the, the management team of the startup in the beginning. So when you, when you start a startup, the role of product manager is probably not the first one that you that you hire. Right? Uh, but as soon as the startup reaches a certain size, and I would say it's in the range of 30 to 50 people in that range, then the management team of the startup cannot do all the product management work anymore by themselves, and then they realize that they need this more than that they need at least one dedicated product manager. Gotcha. And then, of course, when, when companies grow and then become bigger and bigger, you get a much more fine-grained split of work within the organization. And, and so you will have multiple product managers uh, for different products and maybe even teams of product managers working in gas on, on the same product if it's a, if it's a big uh, product. Yeah, I was... But the underlying tasks are, are not so different uh, in these different sizes of, of company. Yeah, I uh, have a blog on my uh, Spice Catalyst website that says entrepreneur is just French uh, for product manager. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but many entrepreneurs and startups, they don't realize that they are doing pretty much the function of product management plus a whole lot more. Yeah. How do you expect yeah. the, uh, uh, the, uh, the field to change over time? You mean uh, the product management role? Correct. Well, what we have been seeing over the last couple of years is that this role has got more and more attention and, and is valued higher than, than it has ever been higher than before. And so you can see that in Silicon Valley, and you are closer to that than I am, but what I'm seeing is that the, the salaries of product managers have gone up quite a bit and on average are now higher than developer salaries. And, and I see similar developments in other geographies. And I've been doing some work in India, and at the moment, the, the skills that you need for filling the product management role are the most sought-after skills in the Indian IT market. Uh, everybody is, is looking for product managers, 
Um, and in Europe, um, we also see that, that uh, the, the demand for, for software product managers, not only in the software industry, but increasingly also in other industries that, that realize that software is turning into their number one value driver for their, for their business. And they all have more and more need for, for additional product management. Okay. So, uh, in that sense, the, let's say the, the positioning of, of this role of product manager has improved a lot, and which is good for the people who have that job. Uh, and uh, so, I, I'm uh, very optimistic regarding the, the future of this of this role. Of course, uh, with the increasing, let's say, connectivity, and, and when you think of subjects like Internet of Things and, 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 and similar developments, industry 4.0, the, the software is more and more combined with hardware elements, and uh, with services, and um, uh, so the role of the software product manager will have to be extended uh, to, to cover a larger spectrum of, uh, of what the business is going to be. And that's not only into the hardware of Internet of Things, but also into artificial intelligence, big data. Uh, uh, metrics, uh, analysis, uh, that type of thing. And that just uh, adds to the agile product manager's role and the project manager uh, and the designer and the uh, user experience uh, expert and uh, uh, turning them into a, a jack of all trades. And hopefully it doesn't drag them away from their primary responsibility, in my opinion, and that's putting together the product plan or the product strategy. Well, I mean, the, the developments that we are seeing across industries, I think, make the role of the product manager more and more demanding because you need an in-depth understanding of all that is going on and that is relevant for your product and the environment that your product is intended to be used in. So, uh, it doesn't get easier. <laughs> so, when you go out and try to hire a product manager, what are you looking for that makes the basis of your decision to make an offer? Yes. Uh, in my view, a product manager needs this combination of, of business orientation, technical skills, and depending on the type of product, domain knowledge. And as we all know, that is rather difficult to find. So traditionally in software organizations, what we have been used to is um, technical people, developers, uh, going into product management. So I think traditionally that has been the number one task how people got into uh, product management jobs. And uh, very often, even though they were excellent developers, they lacked, in particular, the business orientation. And that is always a problem in, in that job. So finding this combination of business orientation, technical understanding, and domain knowledge uh, that is the challenge. Plus, the person also needs, let's say, soft skills that enable him or her to do the, what we call, orchestration part of the job. So the, the cooperation with all the other players in the organization that are relevant for the success of the product. So, dealing with all these people, making sure that they contribute to the success of the product in the best possible way, 
that requires soft skills that uh, that are also part of, of these four requirements for uh, product management. And do they have to be on premise with the development and marketing teams, or could they work remotely? Well, I wouldn't say they have to, but uh, uh, I mean, like, like Scrum said, you know, Scrum, uh, the, the agile methodology is part of that methodology. They demand that the whole team is in one location. Uh, and in terms of productivity, that is always best. However, when you look at reality, in most organizations, it is not the case. In most organizations, people work in distributed teams. Does this work? Yes, it, it can work, but the productivity of the team overall will always be somewhat lower when you work in a distributed environment than when everybody is in the same location and can just go into the room next door and discuss something and, and, and get answers. So in that sense, uh, I would not say that product managers need to be in the same location, and in, in, in reality, very often they are not. Now, when I was at HP, and one of the reasons for HP's success for 50 years uh, was a concept called management by wandering around, that you would discover things and bump into things at the water cooler, or we had donuts, uh, free donuts in the morning and beer blasts at the end of every week. Uh, which is, which I haven't figured out how to do that, uh, remotely yet. But hopefully someday the technology will get there so I can buy you a beer, for example, over uh, the internet. Well, I, I fully agree with you, Dave. So, uh, I mean, not only in terms of productivity, but also in terms of, of, let's say, quality of cooperation and, and creativity of the team. These informal, daily meetings, having a coffee together, these kind of things, contribute a lot to the success of, of the team. And that is something that gets lost when you work uh, in, in a distributed teams. Uh, in my view, I mean, there are, there are quite a number of companies who have cut down on, on internal travel expenses significantly because they claim that with today's video conferencing, we don't need that. We don't have these travel times and they can, can work remotely. I think that has been exaggerated in a lot of organizations. And, and they lose quite a bit of, of productivity and, and creativity of their teams by, by doing that. But uh, I'm aware that is uh, a statement that may not be too popular. <laughs> <laughs> well, here in Silicon Valley, uh, Cisco, where I teach product management and product marketing, they live on WebEx and everybody tends to be remote. And when I go over to some of their office buildings in San Jose, you could roll a bowling ball through there and not hit anything. On the other hand, uh, a few years ago, Yahoo reversed its remote, remote working and insisted that everybody came into the office, which just substantially uh, increased commute times in Silicon Valley because all of them were on the road. So uh, any uh, closing thoughts with regard to product success issues? Well, like, like I said, I mean, I, I think the, the role of, of product managers is key to the success of the products. Uh, we, we live in exciting times. Um, so what, what I'm currently seeing is that, that there is unbelievable innovation in, in this field. Uh, both in, in B2B and in B2C products. Uh, and like, as the more software is turning into this, this 
number one value driver in all these additional industries like the car industry or uh, manufacturing industries. And so the more this role of the software product manager uh, is needed, is required, is, there is demand for this role. And I think our challenge is that there are not enough people around who can fill the role in a good way. And so that's that's why IPMA is so dedicated to uh, improving the situation, to to provide uh, material, to provide trainings, and to provide the material also to universities so that they can offer courses based on on our material to students. And so that's that's a, a major driver for what what we are doing. Thank you for your time, Hans, and thanks uh, for joining us on Product Success Issues. Thank you very much, David. Thanks for joining us on Product Success Management Issues. I am Dave Frayden. Be sure to connect with us on LinkedIn.